Welcome to the Logistics Point interviews. Today I'm joined by Eric Lund, who is the head of a tracking division at Sony Vizilian. And we're talking about technologies, supply chain trends, what is going to happen in the future, what happened in the past, and also about uh, tracking in the supply chain. Eric, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Nick. How do you think that the technologies reshaped the supply chain? You know, the area that we're working in uh, is, is certainly a, a part of that. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, different varieties of visibility solutions, both those as us that uh, integrate uh, hardware components to be able to provide the, you know, the real time or the near real time tracking and the granularity of understanding of what's happening in your supply chain, but also others that are focusing on on trying to be data aggregators and make sense of these aggregated data it is certainly a, a huge area uh, that we are seeing a massive growth in. Normally, you'd say you have 100 years events or you know black swan events every decade, but it seems that every single swan that we have in these days are becoming is becoming a, a black swan, right? So they're really lining up like like ducks on a row these days, and, and that puts so much pressure on logistics, so much pressure on supply chain, both, of course, for companies trying to figure out what in the world to do and the suppliers needing to actually try to uh, provide uh, some predictability in what they are delivering as a service offering to, to their customers. But then you have other technologies that are looking at, at automation, uh, whether it's, it's uh, robotics or it's autonomous service and stuff like that, AI and, and data science is becoming more and more important across the board, including in our field, where certainly that we are providing, uh, helping our customers to get the visibility of what is happening. But the next step that we are working on and, and several others in our field are working on is then providing the predictability based on you know pattern understanding, uh, past historic uh, understanding analysis say that based on these a condition based on what we've seen so far, based on what is happening in the environment for a shipment or a, a trade lane, lane, you might be able to, or you might uh, experience so and so. So you have a greater chance to take actions. And, and, and whether you know, we talk a lot about uh, agility in the supply chain or resilience in the supply chain, where you both you know, can build in the greater resilience, look at multi-sourcing and so on and so forth, but also in the moment, getting a little bit more heads up to actually try to do something about the challenge that is coming your way. Has it become cheaper to implement technology now after two years of real rush for everyone to do it? it uh, the price points when you come into mass production as with any other type of technology uh, will come down. We, we are seeing uh, certainly uh, in the current situation that uh, the components that we are using are not coming down in price because of the, you know, the component crunch yeah. uh, also being, being affected by everything coming to mass production, coming to scale, then will also mean that we and our competitors will move our price points uh, going forward. Uh, but it really uh, requires the combination of the, the pickup that did the substantial mass adoption together with also uh, our ability to see our uh, sourcing partners being able to bring their uh, component pricing down. Mm -hmm. And where it is right now, then it's a little different mm -hmm. battle everybody having when it comes to that, right? Do you think that we are at the edge or have already gone into a mass adoption of technologies that you mentioned, the data science, IoT? Mass adoption of interest, yes. Okay. Uh, mass adoption of of uh, real uh, ubiquitous implementations uh, in in some industries uh, definitely coming a lot stronger. Pharmaceuticals, electronics, uh, uh, certainly it it's uh, very much a, a part of the game. But we are seeing interest and discussion in so many other industry verticals that have been much much more later adopters than uh, than others. And, and where a lot of the drivers have been around, you know, we talk about uh, value cargos and 
security, theft prevention, and, and so on, so on, and so forth. Uh, now, it's, uh, across a multiple lot of use cases, we're having discussions with, uh, with, with, with companies. And when we talk, when we say companies, then it's both with uh, the, you know, the beneficial cargo owners directly themselves, as well as with the logistics providers that are building uh, service capabilities within this field as a part of their overall logistics. And in the beginning, you're coming from Sony Vazilian. Can you just give us a bit of an idea of you know, why is Sony in this place? Sony, we are definitely a lot more than uh, than games, uh, movies, and 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 music. Uh, we are working in a, a number of technology areas that are you know, both visible to the public in uh, in in B two B or B two C place. Uh, we are very active in a number of healthcare areas as well, uh, and um, the, the the background for why. Uh, Sony Brazilian is that we have come out of a very strong heritage within uh, communication knowledge and communication technology background uh, from our Sony mobile days and have really uh, seen this as a, a key area also for us to focus on uh, that we believe that we as a Sony can deliver a clear value uh, to both internal customers as well as uh customers uh, outside sony and not only from a technology point of view but also being a a, a trusted high quality partner in offering uh, a visibility solution uh, to the market so that that's very clearly why we are we are focusing in this and and also why um, we are very much looking at serving our internal customers because obviously we want to make sure that we learn as we go along from 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 solving our 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 colleagues' uh, uh, challenges as well as as people out in uh, in the market. So that is very much why we are in in this field. Join us on the 8th of March online to talk about micro fulfillment and warehouse automation. Speakers include Perselli, Pfizer, Crown Food School of Management, Mango Logistics, and more. Learn how urban locations are transforming to become storage facilities, the power of automation in the warehouse, and the cost of new projects. Don't miss this free online event. Register now. Do you think that each company in the supply chain should look into some way of automating or putting technology into their process? Is it for everyone? It is uh, It is for everyone. And uh, when some of the discussions we've had where uh, you have talking with, uh, when you're talking with companies that have a huge volumes, it could even be, you know, uh, with a relatively low value point, seeing uh, the uh, need to fine-tune, optimize their supply chain, you know, find every single corner they can, they can cut, every single uh, opportunity to improve, make sure that uh, the full infrastructure they have is used at its optimal at all times, is very much driving uh, the need for uh, visibility. The, the point of uh, having access to uh, to trucks, uh, the point of being able to make sure that your, your loading base are available, making sure that the trucks are not uh, waiting outside, you're paying the merits for, for, for unused capacity and unused time and so on like that. There, when you start to go into a granular discussion like that, there, there are still immense savings to be achieved. Uh, but mm -hmm. But again, if you don't have the data, then you can really not act on it. Then you act on 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 assumptions. If we should talk, say anything good about all the challenges the whole industry are facing within supply chain, is that this discussion is now being held at board level. Mm -hmm. It is of imperative uh, interest for uh, for uh, the board. It is a, a point of survival now. It's not something that is happening in the basement anymore. Is there a need to change things in in the management, maybe to put someone who is specifically responsible for technology implementation? I, I see it happening already now. I see, first of all, the, uh, the, you know, the chief supply chain officers are carrying a lot more weight. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now being called uh, chief supply chain officers more and more in companies. And, and, and a part of their play is very much uh, technology. And, and you can see if you talk about what has happened within 
you know, uh, progression of digital supply chains, we have uh, moved light years uh, within the last couple of years. And when we're talking about moving light years in the past, what, where do we think we're going to go in, in the future, in the next few years in the area of automation the, and technology? Uh, the, the same thing. Uh, uh, you, you talked about, uh, asked about the price point uh for, for for tracking or supply chain visibility which which will uh an area where we expect to see a progression but but also the ability to achieve a much more granular view you know we're looking at how can we come down and integrate a view per 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 unit uh per parcel per aggregated unit into a per container or per trailer per multi entity shipment unit so you have the full visibility, end-to-end -end visibility, and being able to associate uh, technology and tracking devices at each stage, okay. you know, and then integrating the different technologies that are used to achieve this uh, this visibility. That at least in in our area, where we're very much focused on on making that possible. Eric, thank you very much for your time. Uh, for everyone watching, you can learn more in the description down below. Eric, thank you very much. Thank you to you, Nick, and thanks for having me again.